Hello and welcome. My name is Manuel Quintana, training manager here at Pragmatic Works. And here we're going to be continuing on a video that we've already put out on YouTube, which is going to be around the Power Query Editor for Paginator Report. Super exciting. If you haven't checked that video out, it's kind of the introductory element. Um, this video has been recorded kind of assuming that you've watched that uh, because we're going to continue there and talk about, well, how do we establish and set up parameters, right? Report parameters is a big part of Paginator Reports with this new type of connection with Power Query Editor. How do we make that all kind of work together, right? And there's going to be some parallels, some similarities to how we've done it in the past, but there's going to be some nuances too. And that's the whole purpose of this video to move and look at those nuances. So as mentioned, Power Query Editor, fresh, great feature inside of Paginator Reports. We're going to take advantage of it. We're going to use a source. I'm going to connect to an Excel workbook in my OneDrive, which was awesome because before you had to connect to and uh, connect to that with a Power BI report, create a Power BI data set, deploy that data set, and then connect to it with Paginator. Mm -mm -mm. connect to it straight from page and airport, which is a beautiful thing. So we're going to go through that process. We're going to check out the Power Query Editor. We're going to manage the parameters there. So this is very similar to how we would do it in Power BI. And then on the page and report side, we are going to create a report parameter and we're going to have to map them. But then there's some nuances between what we need to actually configure inside the Power Query Editor part of the data set and then what we need to do on the page and report side. So just a couple of pieces. We're going to move through that so you can see what's being done. There's as always, as we mentioned, like in the last video, there are some limitations as this is such a new feature, but it's important for you to know how this all works. It's an exciting thing to keep an eye on. So when it becomes available, you're going to be ready to go. So the same could be said when we get into this parameters, I'll mention to you a slight limitation that's present. Um, so we can talk about that, right? So we're going to go through, create ourselves a report parameter. We're going to manage the parameter on the Power Query editor side. And we're going to look at a couple of the properties here. We're not going to be going into depth in this. If you're interested in just generally like, oh, report parameters and how to use them and combining with query parameters, that fun stuff, check out our intro to paginated reports or paginated reports in a day class. For us, let's just dive in and see how all this works within the concept of the new Power Query editor data sets that we can create. So as always, we're going to sneak out of this PowerPoint presentation and head over and do a little demo around parameters in our Power Query Editor Paginator Reports data sets. Before we begin, want to learn more about Power BI and Fabric? Visit prag.works slash Manuel40 to get a 40% discount on one of our annual learning subscriptions to over 100 courses. All right. As you can see, I have a blank report open here on Paginator Reports. And as mentioned, we're going to tap into an existence. I'm going to use the new Power Query Editor. So I'm going to go over to data. And we're going to tap into the power, uh, the get data, the Power Query Editor experience, and connect to. So you're going to see I have my uh, OneDrive location right here, and I've just got a folder, and the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse Excel Workbook. Right, it's a fun thing that we can get into. So I can go ahead. I'm just going to browse since I'm logged in to the uh, the desktop tool. It's automatically logging me in to my actual OneDrive, and there's my folder right there, and there's my workbook. So all I do is connect to it, and now we're just in the Power Query Editor. We'll simplify this data set a little bit, but not do too much because our focus is on parameters. So I'm going to grab the dim product table. You can literally do this and follow along with me with any data set you want. I just wanted to make sure I use something that's fun, that goes new along with the Power Query Editor. And I'm just going to pick a couple of columns. I'm just going to go ahead and choose product key, product alternate key, uh, English product name, color, and list price. And then what I'm going to do so we can have a little bit more fun is um, remove any of the null list prices. And of course, I'm going to change that data type here because it didn't do it automatically to a currency. But that's basically it. That's all we're worried about as far as this data sets. But I am going to go ahead and go with that manage parameter. So this is where we're going to place the parameter. And for now, we're going to leave it as a basic kind of style parameter. And you'll see what I mean by that as we go through this. So manage parameters. I'm going to hit new. And I'm simply going to call this color. And for now, I'm just going to switch this data type to a text. We're going to come back to that option later as there's something unique we need to do under certain circumstances. So for now, this is perfectly fine. And you're going to, you, you'll probably already kind of understand where we're going on some of these limitations here in a moment. Not necessarily technical limitations, but by the way, I've set up this parameter. Because if I go to product, the way normally we would do this is we would configure color column is going to be filtered. I'm going to use equals by my parameter. So you can see this is going to be working. All I need to do, it's going to return no rows now. But if I go over here and say red, all right, put that in. And we have red. This is standard. This is how we would use parameters with Power BI. Nothing fun, uh, fancy here. For now, let's go ahead and hit create. 
Now remember, <clears throat> when it comes to these Power Query Editor data sets, if you bring in multiple tables, multiple things, it's always the bottom, the, whatever's in that list of queries on the left-hand side, whatever's at the very bottom, that is the only data set. That's the only table that gets loaded as a data set. So do keep that in mind. We covered that in the introduction video when I first went over the Power Query Editor. The reason why that matters is gonna come up here in a moment. But let's go ahead and just get these two things to communicate. I'm gonna go ahead now on the report data pane and create a new parameter. Like I said, we're gonna keep it pretty basic. I'm gonna call this color. I'm gonna call this color and we'll leave it as text and we'll just hit okay. This is a very basic parameter. This provides us a plain text box, which is not optimal. We'll update this and make it more optimal in a moment, but you can see, and we haven't tied it to the data set at all. So this won't have any impact. Let's actually tie it. This is very standard how you would do it normally. I'm gonna go right to the data sets go to the properties and we're going to find a parameter section here and all we have to do is on the left hand side give the name of the parameter that we defined in the data set itself so within the power query editor that's what's on the left and in the drop down we're going to see the value here of color which was our report parameter which exists in the report data pane so now these are tied together make sure you name them correctly so whatever you did in power query editor it has to be exact uh, and now when i go ahead and run this we can go ahead and say I'm going to use the color black because red was the default. So I want results not to be red. So you can obviously see that these are tied together and working, but we can see, let's see here. Oh, might not have been a valid value here. One second. And it's actually pretty funny because it's not an issue with what we're typing in. What it is, is how about we actually put an object in? Here? <laughs> let's put it in this table. And I'm just going to grab the product name, the color and the list price. And we're going to see if we go back moving too quickly there. That we get our color, our color. So you can see this is working. We've tied everything together successfully. I'm just gonna expand this just a smidgen so it doesn't word wrap. Now, here's the caveat. One, I don't want this to be a plain text box because I want my users to choose from a valid list of colors so they don't potentially make a mistake in typing this in. And second, I want the potential so they can choose multiple values or look at all of the colors we have available, right? So that's where we need to make some adjustments. And the obvious thing, right, might be just to go over here into the parameter and say, I want to allow multiple values. Now, from a report parameter perspective, that pretty much solves quite a few issues. The one thing it doesn't resolve is, because it is a drop-down box, is we need to have something here. Our available values for the report parameter, a list of values that my users can choose from, and those be something that's dynamic. So the best thing that we would think about is, well, why don't we go back into the Power Query Editor where we were, we can either duplicate or reference our query, remove all the other columns, and then deduplicate our color column. That would make sense. But remember, when you're working in the Power Query Editor, it only brings over one table over into as a data set. So I couldn't have another query in there that I want to be its own separate data set. To achieve this, we need to actually go through the process again in hitting Get Data. So I'm just going to point to the same connection right here. We're going to point to the same file. We're just rinse and repeating here. And we're going to go ahead, choose this item, choose this item. And we're going to clean this up very simply, right? Dim product. All we want to get from this is a list of colors, valid color values that will be updated. So if dim product gets updated and we have new products, new colors, this will get updated as well. So I'm going to follow in suit. The only thing I'm going to do to match what we've done is for list price, going to remove null like we did before and literally get rid of every single column here other than color. And all that's left is to get a distinct list. So I simply remove duplicates. This now gives me, and I'll rename this query, right? Let's just call this colors. Now I have a query that's gonna be returned as a data set, which I can use to populate the available values of my report parameter. Go right over here, hit the drop down, point to my new data sets, and now we have a drop down list of values, right? So we think all is well and good. A new query for that. We go ahead and run this, and now I have a drop down list. And the default is going to have everything selected here, uh, but there's a problem, right? When we run this, it doesn't give us an error, it returns nothing because of the operator. Remember how we established the filter within the Power Query Editor? We set it so that the color equals a selection. So it's really meant for one color at a time. We've just sent it a list of colors. And in this case, it's saying, okay, for this row, is it white, blue, black, red, all the colors that we had in there? Does that row meet that requirement? Of course not, nothing. So that's why it returns blank. 
So we simply have to think about the operator and how we're filtering that column. So what we have to do is return to the Power Query Editor. And what we'll do is there's a couple of issues here, right? We might think the easiest thing is, oh, okay. Well, we have a filter and it's equals. Let's simply switch that so we can go over here, right? And switch this over to the in operator, which you would be correct in this. But unfortunately, the UI doesn't really display right now. There is a problem here. And when we hit OK, we're going to see that message appear. L when we choose in, it requires a different type of value to be passed through. It requires a parameter type of list. So what we need to do is go over to our parameter, manage it. And historically in the past, you might think it's under su suggested values because there's a list. But we actually go right here under type. Under type, we switch this to list. If you wanted to put values here, you can, but it's not necessary. This, of course, by not populating anything, will end up having this return as blank because we're supplying nothing for the list, so no rows. But that's fine because, remember, we control the filter selection on the report side. So with that change being made, switching over our parameter to a list data type, we now should have the ability of going over here and making this type of choice. So you can see now when we run the reports, we have all of our colors. And more importantly, we can be very specific on which colors we would like. I'm just randomly picking some. Here is where we'll find one small limitation at the moment. If you decide here at this juncture to choose one specific color, we do receive an error message and it gives us an issue around the, since we're only supplying a singular value, it's having an issue converting that for a list. So it's a little bit of an odd error message but this is the current limitation that we're seeing with this parameterization when you wanna be able to select multiple values, um, but that's it, right? So that's the option. Obviously, if you want people to choose one single color at a time, you could always not enable multi-value, leave it to an equals option. So you've got kind of directions. You know, I do believe this will be kind of remedied in the future so that even when we use multi-value and we decide to choose just one, that it will actually function. But as of right now, this is uh, something of consideration. So just keep that in mind as you go through with it. But as you've seen here, some similarities, right? We have to create that report parameter. It's in best practice to use available values. You're gonna want a query that supplies a list of those values. Just the method that we use to power creator a little bit different. We have to think about right now with the limitation that if you have multiple queries in your Power Query editor, it's only the lowest level on that list of tables and queries. Whatever's the last table on the list, that's the only thing that'll get returned as a data set. We covered this in the last video where we talked about merging. So we had to create a whole separate Power Query connection, get that list of colors, and then bring it in so it can populate that. And then also we got to see the whole thing of the data type needs to be set to a list if you want to go ahead and have the multiple value selection. So hopefully that makes sense. You know, like I said, I'm super excited about this feature. We're seeing more and more how we can use it. And it's only a matter of time as they have some of these limitations removed. And this eventually becomes GA ready for consumption. And it really just opens up to so many cool options for us when it comes to creating paginated reports. So hopefully you're as excited as I am about this feature. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you in the next one. And don't forget to like and subscribe.